it's time to actually study a little bit on the performance on pumps we will always analyze the efficiency so how much work are you giving to the system and how much work are you expending so for example if you have an inlet of 100 joules of energy per second of electricity and you are only giving 80 joules per second of mechanical energy to the system well you have a 80 percent efficiency that's normal actually but you want to increase it so the most you want to increase it the most possible it is not possible to have 100 percent because it's because of the thermodynamics laws especially the second law but you will always be able to increase the efficiency if you do good practices and maintenance and all that stuff but we are now very interested on the pressure in the inlet of the pump because you will probably hear cavitation cavitation is the worst thing you may have in a pump this is essentially the damage due to little bubbles so I know you probably say why the bubbles damage the impeller well this is because they evaporate and when they evaporate they let's say explode or actually implode and this implosion causes a lot of damage so because they are compressible and I told you before we are interested in only constant density the thing here is that compressible flow will damage the impeller so when you have different pressures which actually means different forces imagine you have a material which is having this normal force that's okay but if you have different forces very strong forces small forces that will be very very dangerous for the material this process is known as cavitation and this is essentially due to the presence of a low pressure in the inlet in the suction but actually in the eye the outlet is okay that does not matter that much but the most important part will be the eye so if you remember a little bit on vapor pressures and how substances evaporate and so on you remember there are vapor pressures and as the vapor pressure decreases <coughs> the boiling point of the pressure decreases so let me show you for example water probably you have no idea you haven't seen this more into the substance parts and thermodynamics but if you are for example using water or piping at 80 celsius degrees and you have an inlet of one atmosphere recall that for one atmosphere we have the famous 100 celsius degrees as a boiling point but there is another vapor pressure for 80 celsius what does that mean is for example 80 celsius will be something like this let's say that 0.75 atmospheres will boil okay so you have less pressure you will have gas definitely so in the eye, if I tell you that this pump works in a way in which the inlet pressure of this fluid is one atmosphere, that's okay. But when you go inside the eye, you're going to have a pressure drop, which is very common. I'm going to explain you later. And in this pressure drop, you will have 0.5 atmospheres. But since the vapor pressure of this water at 80 Celsius degrees is 75 atmospheres, the water is going to evaporate and that's going to be very very bad for our uh, pump especially for the impeller because of the cavitation as you can see yeah, that was I was telling you for a half you will have or you will need water at 20 celsius degrees in order for it not to boil but you have it at 80 celsius so you're going to evaporate a little bit of water in the eye and I tell you this is very really wrong so remember the eye is actually this point, you have this suction, you have the discharge. So let me actually model for you guys the pressure in the suction. Let's say we have a pressure of operation. In the suction, let's say it's one atmosphere. In the eye, we're going to have a drop. This is very common, guys. Let me I will explain you a little bit later, but let's suppose that we always have a drop on pressure on the eye. And eventually, of course, the point of the pump is to increase pressure so we're going to have a increase of pressure in the discharge 
So this is the actual model of the pressure that experiences through the suction line, then the eye, and then the discharge. So if we are operating this fluid right here with a low pressure or vapor pressure, that's fine because we are going to have a very stable fluid. But if we are operating at this pressure or vapor pressure, let's say this alcohol and this was water, for example, alcohol, ethanol evaporates easier. So this is not safe because probably you have it here as a liquid, then you drop on pressure. All this area means vaporization. And eventually, yes, of course, you're going to increase the pressure and therefore you're going to have it once again as a liquid alcohol. But this area will make some evaporation, some bubbles, which will be very dangerous for the impeller. Actually, it will cause some damage. So just for you to imagine, guys, imagine you were playing around and you have this little bubble right here, and then you add extra pressure, and then you add a little bit more pressure until eventually this pops. So this pop popping, you know, is you're going to crash these three slabs with this desk right here. So that's very wrong guys this will create a lot of damage actually let me show you I got high pressure means high damage so this is an impeller guys you can see the little bubbles form right here all these bubbles so plenty of people ask me through social media such as Facebook Twitter YouTube via email and so on they asked me if they can get free access to the course or if I have scholarships or whatever. No, I don't, but I do offer a free trial, so you can click here, you can try it for free. You are unsure to commit? Well, you can always join this 3-day free trial, so click here, and it will send you to here. And you got the option right here, the 3-day free trial, you pay now zero dollars. And you have 3 days access, you can cancel whenever you want, you just gotta select right here you will get access to all this material for three days. It's wrong. And probably you're asking yourself, how do you get air bubbles inside water? Actually, it's not air bubbles, it's fluid bubbles. So for example, if you are having here water, this will be vapor uh, of water. You have alcohol, this will be alcohol in vapor form. You have chlorine as a liquid, which I probably don't recommend to use, but if you have it, you will be having chlorine as a gas right here. So let me actually show you this video. No, it's the next video. This is just a picture. In the next video, we're going to see a little bit on why do we form. When a submarine propeller sinks quickly, an area of low pressure is created on the blade. This lowering of pressure causes the water to boil without heating up exactly. and produces bubbles of steam. This is called Cavitation. Let me explain it to you guys. Uh, wait, wait. You had the impeller right here. Let's say in this case it's not a pump, but it's the same principle. You have the impeller, and because they start moving so fast, guys, you start generating. Let's say, for example, let me pause it right here. This is moving through here and this is moving through here. So actually, you have a deficit of forces right here. You have a change of force. This force is, let's say, force, let's say, pressure. Pressure. Plus the change of pressure. And this has actually a pressure minus the change of pressure. So these guys are going to lower their pressure. And what does that mean? When you have low pressure, you have low boiling points. And when you have low boiling points, means that if you achieve the temperature, you might even generate vapor pressures. So once again, this is not water, guys. Uh, sorry, this is not air. This is water bubbles. Just keep that in mind, guys. And look what cavitation does. So probably you weren't thinking little bubbles called destroyed, but actually, yes, look how these little bubbles start. And this is no rusting. This is no, uh, let's say, because of the salt water or salt, this is due to cavitation. So you gotta calculate the actual velocity at which you will not generate these little bubbles. This is strong cavitation, you can see here, these are bigger bubbles right here. Here there's a little bit. Normally you have cavitation on this side, on the other side you have not 
uh, let's say you don't have this little bubble damage so just keep in mind guys that you need to avoid cavitation once again sorry I, I didn't tell you you could check this go to this video this guy explained you pretty well how cavitation work and how can we avoid that and actually this is from I don't remember which channel also but they were talking about how to avoid these little bubbles because these little bubbles can be detected by the enemy and then you are going to be let's say shown or you will be discovered and cavitation not only makes damage to the impeller which is right here it can also make a little bit damage or in this case a lot of damage in the housing so you have the housing of the centrifugal pump right here this is the inlet this is the outlet and probably this let's say this was the impeller and they took it out but not only the impeller has cavitation you can see the cavitation or damage right here in the wall of this uh, centrifugal pump housing so moral of the story let's avoid cavitation and we will see how to calculate cavitation and how to avoid it this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.